What features of X and Y determine human sex? The approach followed was to look for mutations, to learn from the type of perturbation and from the outcome. In other words, to determine cause and effects. Chromosome number mutants, i.e. aneuploids, were found that have, in the simplest arrangement, two X's and one Y. These individuals display a pathological syndrome called Kleinfelter and are male. Aneuploidy in Kleinfelter subjects can involve higher number of X chromosomes. Although severity of the syndrome increases, the sex is always male. Interestingly, the number of bar bodies is always equal to the number of X's minus one. For example, the nucleus shown here is from an XXXY individual and displays two bar bodies, corresponding to two X out of three that were inactivated. Indeed, quadruple X Kleinfelters display three bar bodies. Additional important observations involve aneuploids that lack the Y. For example, aneuploids with a single X chromosome and no Y result in Turner syndrome. Affected individuals are females whose symptoms can be relatively minor. Triple X aneuploids are nearly normal females. In summary, considering sex chromosome aneuploidy, we come to two major conclusions. First, it is not the number of X, but the presence or absence of Y that determines sex. Second, the Y chromosome acts as a dominant determinant of male sex. Is this a general principle? Let's consider another XY system. Fruit fly, sex chromosomes appear very similar in principle to those of human. However, sex chromosome aneuploids behave very differently. XXY, which was male in human, is a normal female in fly. And XO, which was female in human, is a nearly normal male in fly. Triple X, also a normal female in human, is lethal in fly. Studying these responses, we conclude that Y matters very little or not at all in fly sex determination. Instead, it is the number of X's, i.e. X dosage, that determines sex. Let's get back to humans and their XY chromosomes. If Y acts in a dominant fashion to determine maleness and the female trait is recessive, how does it work? Typically, dominant action of a genetic factor implies an active product, while recessive action is often associated with no product or weak product. So, dominance of Y implies that a Y-encoded gene produces a product. What is this gene and its product? Another class of chromosomal abnormalities, translocations of Y regions, provide important information. In a translocation, part of a chromosome attaches to another chromosome. Translocations can start with two double-stranded DNA breaks, one in Y and the other on an autosome. The two cut fragments float away, encounter another broken end, and are ligated together by the cell DNA repair system. The result is a reciprocal translocation. Another type of translocation can result when two breaks on the Y chromosome produce a chromosome segment that moves from the original chromosome and is ligated to a different one. The result is a segmental translocation. The existence of Y to autosome translocation were discovered when normal males were found to have two X chromosomes and no Y. The individuals with this karyotype should have been females. Characterization of their autosomes found Y translocations of different types. Summarizing this line of research, phenotypically normal males with two X and no Y were found to carry Y translocations. By comparing the different translocations, they were found to share a common region that was called sex determining region on Y, abbreviated as SRY. Progressively, SRY was whittled down to a DNA segment carrying a single gene. A very similar gene, the ortholog, was found on the Y chromosome of mouse. This provided the opportunity to test its functionality. Using genetic engineering techniques, the SRY DNA carrying the gene was introduced into the genome of a female XX embryonic cell, which developed into an embryo that contained two X chromosomes and the SRY gene. This, in turn, developed into a male mouse, as demonstrated by the presence of male sexual organs here. The gene was called testes determining factor, or TDF. Sometimes it is also called the SRY protein. This discovery indicates that a single gene is responsible for switching the developmental path from the basal female pattern to the male pattern. TDF is a transcription factor and a master regulator. It binds DNA and affects the expression of multiple genes near the binding sites. The action of these genes is represented in this network where TDF regulated genes are in red and the affected process is in yellow. Don't panic. The image is simply meant to convey how a single master regulator gene action can cascade to affect many processes. In summary, the sex of aneuploids, such as XXY and XO, 
indicate a dominant role for Y. A region of Y responsible for sex, SRY, can be defined by analyzing translocations to autosomes. XX individuals with an SRY translocation are males. A single gene in SRY, called TDF, is sufficient to confirm male sex by regulating a host of genes. Alright, <clears throat> there we go.